An international playground for tourists escaping the northern winter, the island of Tenerife in the Canary Archipelago offers sun, sand and surf. Further offshore the Spanish island, a strong wind gusts virtually all the year round to guarantee an action-packed holiday for water sport enthusiasts. It's this combination of elements that makes Tenerife a tourist paradise and the ideal site for an experiment by a small British business which claims to have made a discovery which will revolutionise agriculture and bring an infinite supply of fresh water to a world being overtaken by arid desert. Deserts are growing at a fairly alarming rate. Although already 30% of the planet is desert, and a lot of those are coastal. Now, the only source of water that's available is seawater, but it's no use for growing things because it's salty. And we think we've come up with a way of taking the water out of the seawater and producing fresh water to grow things. Tenerife proved to be an excellent testing ground for this pioneering water-making invention. Once the island was a vast open-air market garden, now, in fields where tomato plants once thrived, the earth is barren, save for a few thorny cacti. Problems began only a few decades ago. The underground aquifers from which farmers drew their precious water began to dry up. The deeper the wells were dug, the faster the water table dropped. What little rain fell would take years to seep through the earth to replenish subterranean supplies. Soon, the only source of fresh water disappeared. Rain almost never falls on Tenerife, even the highest mountain in Spanish territory, towering at the centre of the island, remains dry most of the year round. Once the irrigation channels ran dry, the poor soil of the volcanic island ceased to support life. While most other tomato farmers moved into the more profitable business of tourism, Antonio Cordoba studied how to harness the elements that drove him off the land, and now works for ITER, the Spanish Government Institute for Renewable Energy. Monitoring the wind farm which towers over the now barren tomato fields, he still remembers vividly how lush the island once was. There used to be no other way of life. We knew only agriculture and farming. This area was once exclusively set aside for tomato farming. We knew nothing else. Twenty-five years ago, the tomato farms were all we had. Then the water ran out. And now, with the problems we have here, there's nothing left at all. Antonio Cordobes might well see the resurrection of Tenerife's verdant past with the help of a revolutionary greenhouse being tested next to ITER's wind farm site. Designed and built by British company Lightworks, the business boasts that its greenhouse can create an inexhaustible supply of fresh water and cool air. It's fed on two elements in plentiful supply at Tenerife, wind and seawater. Like all good ideas, the principle behind this design is simple. If you're in a hot sunny place and you're by the sea, almost invariably the humidity will be very high. And the humidity has come from the seawater. The sun shining on the seawater makes the water evaporate. And you can see that here. If you have a cold glass, the water condenses on the cold surface. It's fresh water. The greenhouse acts as a huge cold glass, trapping the water-laden air which blows into the mouth of the construction, condensing it into fresh water, which is used to irrigate the crops inside. Just metres from a hostile windswept beach, the most fragile of vegetation, lettuce and beans, thrive in a protected environment. Outside, the wind is howling and hot. Inside, behind a specially constructed cardboard lattice wall, a searing gale is transformed into a cool and gentle breeze. Well, the whole of this wall the whole of this side of the greenhouse is facing into the prevailing wind. And we're using seawater pouring down this, this card material to cool the air and to put moisture back into the airstream so it raises the humidity. But the salt water that runs down here, the salt just goes on and circulates through the system. And it's only the water vapor that comes off to increase the humidity in the growing area.
The wall is made of a simple, lightweight cardboard lattice, which has proved remarkably resistant to wind and continuous drenching in salt water. Using electricity supplied by the adjacent wind farm, seawater is continually pumped over the lattice with enough flow to ensure the salt doesn't crystallise and clog the porous layers. Once the air has been loaded with water vapour from the cardboard lattice, it absorbs even more water from the plants inside the greenhouse itself. So now that the air has been cooled and humidified, it travels through the greenhouse and the lettuces and the beans are also transpiring more water vapour into the air. And as they do so, the humidity gets high and it condenses into fresh water on a cold surface, just like it does on the glass. This cold surface is found at the back of the greenhouse. Water is drawn, again by wind-powered pumps, from the chilly depths offshore. This cold water is fed into tiny aluminium pipes which form a condenser. This chilled aluminium wall will draw the fresh water from the now super-humidified air. Once the air has been through the greenhouse and it's picked up the humidity, it passes through this heat exchanger, which is cooled by cold water from the sea. And so the humidity condenses, just like dew, as you saw on the glass, and we get fresh, pure, distilled water. As long as the wind blows, a steady stream of fresh water trickles into storage tanks like these. From the reservoir, the water is fed to the crops via a drip feed system. The vegetation inside the greenhouse thrives on a constant water supply, which even Mother Nature could not provide in such measured quantity. They're going extremely well. They are growing quite fast, obviously under almost ideal conditions in terms of the environment that they're growing in. We can give them enough water, very good quality water. Uh, we've already cropped a lot of lettuce and beans. The yields are well within uh, commercial quantities, so we're very, very pleased. While the British team have solved the problem of water supply, the other debilitating factor for plants in arid regions such as Tenerife is heat, which is constantly high, even during the so-called winter months. The paradox is that if you want to grow crops in hot, arid regions, there are two problems. You haven't got enough water, and there's too much heat in the light. So we're using the roof of the greenhouse to take the heat out of the light, but allow sufficient visible light through for the plants so that we can optimize the process of growth. And as you'll see, these, these crops here have been in for four weeks now, and we're getting spectacular produce. The right amount and the right type of light is but one of the many factors the British team are juggling in their quest to create the ultimate greenhouse. As well as experimenting with various amounts of water and light, the company has crammed one half of the greenhouse with many different species of flowering plants, vegetables and trees. At the moment we're establishing a, a tree nursery to the rear of the greenhouse so the plants in the second half will be moved there uh, hopefully in the, in the next few days. The second half of the greenhouse will then become very similar to this half. We wish to compare two sides so that will give us two replicates, two sides. One we can leave as a standard and the second we can maybe adjust flow rates of water, uh, temperatures, see how that affects the performance of the crops. There are two things, as the, how their crop will affect the environment and also the environmental effect on the crop. Experiments have already yielded exciting results as well as super quality salad. The condenser at the back of the greenhouse has produced much more water than is needed. Depending on atmospheric conditions, it's estimated that the heat exchange system could irrigate a much wider area, up to 20 times the size of the greenhouse building. This greenhouse is not meant to be a commercial greenhouse. We built this to come up with the answers, to experiment with the idea, and to try out where it's sensitive. Once we've got these answers, which will take us a year or so, we want to develop a low-cost agricultural building that can be replicated on a large scale. But nevertheless, it's still going to be more expensive than a conventional greenhouse. But a one hectare, say, greenhouse of this type 
provides enough cold air and fresh water to irrigate 10 or 20 times its own size, like we built here. And this sort of, this sort of system is very much cheaper than a conventional greenhouse. Cheaper in the long term, the greenhouse also runs on environmentally friendly wind or solar power. It's this aspect that has attracted the attention and the cooperation of the Spanish Renewable Energy Authority. For the Tenerife Islanders, the British project has brought renewed hope. All the, all the, all the islands in the world has uh, a problem with the water. And in this case, uh, in Tenerife, we have uh, a big problem with the water because we have a lot of tourists and our, our agriculture needs more and more water. Uh, our water table is growing now and this project is very, very interesting for the agriculture for the, for the island because we solve two, two, in, in the same project we solve two problems, the agriculture problem and the water problem. Interest in the project is expected to extend far beyond the waves of Tenerife. As the greenhouse works best in hot, windy regions next to deep water, the Middle East offers a huge potential market. be one of the most important areas. The, they have very good conditions there. In, in other words, they've got high light with very great potential for growing things. But there is no water. And where there is water, the water table is going down all the time. So I, I think that's going to be one of the major areas of, of interest in this. Away from the balmy beaches of Tenerife at the company's humble headquarters in East London, the British team has developed computer software which is proving just as valuable as the greenhouse itself. Using a sophisticated program, they can test the results of building modifications without laying a brick. Using information supplied by the test greenhouse in Tenerife, the computer will also accurately predict how a similar building would work anywhere in the world. We need to be able to say how the greenhouse would work in all sorts of different places. And um, this really does just that, because you can plug in the weather from any location and design the greenhouse of any size, length, area, and then say how much water you produce um, what kind of area of land you can irrigate, how much you can reduce the temperature inside the greenhouse, which is what we're looking at, cooling the ambient uh, temperature. While conventional greenhouses are designed to warm the air under the glass, the Lightworks design attempts to do the opposite, cool the air, yet increase the light. So far it's worked. The company boasts the healthiest lettuces ever produced on Tenerife. But before the prototype is developed into a commercially available product, there's another 12 months of tests to complete before the company can guarantee perfect produce every time. Corrosion is, is difficult because we've got a lot of seawater, but we've, I think we've overcome most of this by using uh, plastic almost invariably where, where anything comes in contact with the, the water. We had a, a major problem with our first crop which got decimated by rats, uh, but we've since stopped up all the holes and put down some... Uh, food for them and I think that's sort of done the trick now. Despite the inevitable minor problems, the company is confident that its greenhouse will soon be providing fresh water to reclaim coastal deserts around the world. Much of our parched planet will run out of water before it runs out of oil. If the British design proves successful, a new source of life will flow from the wind and the waves. <laughs>